Hey, this is Jason Cadigan for the Make Space Boring News Show, and I wanted to talk to Bob Weirdy. Robert Weirdy here is with Marsh, and he's a space insurance professional who's also been a satellite engineer, and I've had him on the Cold Star Project and also on the uh, Make Space Boring virtual conference to speak about space insurance. So uh, I wanted you on, Bob, to talk about Rocket Lab and the uh, mission loss that we had this week and to see what <laughs> what we can show people about it. There's there's not a lot we can talk about, but uh, I think you have some insights. So why, why don't we begin by sharing um, your perception of what happened and what it means for the space insurance marketplace? Well, you know, again, you're right. We, we can't speak too much to any particulars and, and I don't know specifically, you know, what what any amount of insurance may or may not have been on this vehicle. But from a, I think from, a, from an insurance point of view, it's just a reminder that, that space is tough. I mean, you know, we, we, you know, Rocket Lab has had a very successful run, right? They've had, you know, 12, 12 or so launches successful um, and, and, and now have a, have a failure. And, you know, Vega, about a year ago, same thing, about the same number of flights and, and, then, and then a failure. It's just a reminder that, you know, it's a difficult business. There's a lot a lot that can go wrong. And even, even when you've built like what you think is a good, hey, you know, we have 10 in a row, we sort of have the recipe down. Something, something comes up that you hadn't thought about or there's just so many moving parts, process, making sure all, all the components and everything are within, you know, certain parameters, uh, just the software, you know, was there, was there any changes on this particular flight? I don't know. Um, was something new or slightly different? Don't know. But again, it's just, it's just sort of, just highlights that putting putting something in the space you know you're, you're you got a lot you got volatile fuel and you got a lot of basically a controlled explosion right you're, you're putting a, a rocket up in space it takes a lot of energy and um you know things things can go wrong so i know your tagline is you want to make want to make space boring and by that you mean routine and um you know well we haven't quite gotten there yet but, you know making great strides i think but um this is a reminder that we, you know, we're still not at the, at the point where it's like uh, getting on an airliner. And that highlights, I would think, in my mind, the need for insurance, right? We just never know when it's going to be a bad day. And uh, it could be a lot of money at risk, a lot of money at risk. Right, right. I, I forgot to say, Bob here is uh, our space insurance advisor here at Cold Star Tech. It's a, it's a little role he's taken on, which I appreciate very much and why I'm, we're talking right now about this. So point being, flight heritage is important, but it doesn't mean you get a free pass, right? It well, it doesn't guarantee, right? Doesn't, yeah, exactly. Success, yeah. My, my engineering days, you know, it was, you know, building satellites and all. It was very important to have flight heritage, but you know, you always knew a lot of flight heritage hardware that had failed, right? I mean, most because you're not usually flying something new and a lot of stuff that, that's failed isn't necessarily something that's up there for the first time. It's it's a difficult it's a difficult business. It's it's an unforgiving, you know, space is an unforgiving environment. As I said earlier, launching something into space is uh, it's unforgiving. Pretty much have to have it perfect. Uh, you know, you're building margins and, and, and everything for sure. But um, it doesn't take much to go wrong for, uh, for it to be a complete, you know, complete failure. All right, Bob, uh, one last question before we get out of here, which is uh, proportional to the industry. How, how big of a problem is this? We had the Vega thing last year, uh, unfortunately this now. Does this matter in terms of rates? Well, that's a, that's a good question. My sense is at least right now, I, I don't suspect that this is gonna you know, move rates up but I think it's just a reminder that, you know, we've had very significant losses in the industry in the, in the past year, past 18 months. Um, incrementally, this is not gonna add a whole lot to that, I don't suspect, but uh, it is a reminder, again, that, you know, this is a, a risky business, that things can go wrong, and I think it's just, at least, if nothing else, psychologically, I think it's a reminder to, you know, to the whole industry, underwriters, brokers, et cetera, that if things go wrong, they can go wrong spectacularly. And it is something that um, I, I think is going to keep pressure on, on, the, on the rates, you know, not, not coming down necessarily in any, any time soon. In my view, it just sort of adds a little bit more uh, reinforcement to the, to the hardening market that we're in right now. So that, right. that, I don't know if that answers your question, but I think that's about how I would say Yeah, it. yeah. I mean, proportionally, Vega was like 400 million, and this is five to 10 million, maybe something like that, three and a half. Yeah, yeah. Seven yeah. and a half, somewhere in there, I would say. So it's, it's um, <clears throat> okay, not going to impact too much. All right. Bob here is too polite to say it, folks, but he represents the uh, customer 
that is the rocket launching company <laughs> and satellite manufacturers. So if you're in the market for space insurance, I recommend you go connect with uh, Robert Weirdy on LinkedIn and uh, talk to him about what you can get done for uh, the right price for space insurance. Thanks for doing this, Bob. No problem, Jason, and you have a great day.